Hi friends, this is Katya Gorbacheva with Total Body Lab and welcome to Total Body Lab Daily Digest where I answer questions that people send to my DMs that I find useful and are regularly asked and uh, try to spell, spill some light onto, onto those popular topics. I do not edit these videos on the computer, so if you find this unprofessional, feel free to bitch in the comments about it, but we're gonna keep going. Uh, today, the question is actually from my current client. Before she was my client, she was just asking me a bunch of things, and I think those are pretty typical. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer some of those, probably one by one, because I had like a long conversation with her. Uh, anyways, let's start. Hi Katya, I really need to lose weight. Uh, I need to join your workout group. I have three kids and really need help. I've been trying to lose weight and become plant-based, but it seems to not work. Can I try something in your group? Um, how, how do I join? How do I pay? Is it all virtual? I keep being around 196 to 190 pounds, kind of goes up and down, but if I get rid of at least 10 or 20 pounds, that would be great. After my last pregnancy, I've been trying to do this for four years and still can't. I do track my calories occasionally, not really sure how to consume protein properly. Okay, that's a lot. Let's, uh, let's get into it. <clears throat> so, I have a community lifting program or support group where I just write workouts. They're not custom and you can join it. It's 29 bucks a month and be in the group chat, have access to me in the group chat and uh, that's it. It does not include nutrition. It does not include customizing the workouts. She originally was going to do that and then with all of these questions, I was like, if you want to give me a call, so I answered them one by one. I did give her a call, answered those questions and she was like, all right, I do need nutrition. That group will not work. So she ended up joining the one-on-one -on -one coaching Right, so I do write her custom nutrition plans and uh, custom workouts based on her equipment at the house. She does not go to the gym. The support group program, community program, I don't know how to call it better. Please advise in the comments. Basically, that's only gym workouts. So she works out from home. She doesn't have time to go to the gym. So she decided to do the one-on-one, -on -one, which is more expensive than, than the community program. So anyways, um, I don't meet in person with people. So she was first very confused about that. She was like, oh, live far away. How do we do this? You don't need to meet with me in person. As long as I see what you do online, we're good. As long as you ask me all the questions that you have about your training, we're good. Track your nutrition. I check it. I give you some feedback and write your new macros for the next week. Pretty simple stuff. But if you have never done it like that, it may be a little confusing because people think that the most effective thing is to meet in person with a coach and they hold your hands at the gym and watch you do your squats or whatever, use some machine and they count your reps and then they high five you and you leave and I don't know, you're minus a hundred bucks an hour, but you feel good, you feel like you met with a coach, you did something. I don't think it's the most effective way because you're with them for like one hour a week, maybe two, but what do you do for the rest of the week? What you eat, most important, what you eat is not a part of that scenario, but it needs to be a part of that scenario because the way you gain or lose weight is based on calorie surplus or calorie deficit that is easiest to control with your nutrition. Of course, you can expand more energies in your activity if you train more and walk more and do more cardio, but it takes more time and more effort, so it's easier just to eat a little bit less, uh, not just have only an activity exercise um, calorie deficit. We're not getting into the calorie deficit and how to lose fat in this video, but anyways, I hope you got my point. That is for beginners. I'm not talking powerlifters, bodybuilders. There would have to have a different scenario in terms of uh, weight loss and calorie deficit. Okay, so she's a beginner. Uh, she's been trying to lose weight for a while and it goes up and down. Tracking occasionally. Oh, do I have a problem with this? I don't think it's worth to track at all if you're not going to be consistent with it, at least for a while, right? Like if I know my life is more or less the same Monday through Friday, and then on like Saturday, Sunday, I can go out, eat, you know, have a drink, 
do other things, not eat at home. So I kind of have a regimen Monday through Friday, and then I have a different regimen Saturday or Sunday. So that means I need to track for like a week or two and figure out my calories. That's what I ask all of my clients. Like, can you just track for a week or two so I see what you do and how you eat when you're at home or when you're in your homework kids situation and then on your weekend stuff. Most people eat pretty good, quote unquote, in the mornings and then they snack in the evenings or closer to night. And on the weekends, they go out, drink beer, calories are over. So all of that is fine and you can still gain muscle, lose weight with that. But we do need to know how big those differences are daily and on the weekend or if each day is the same even, right? So with her, each day was not the same because her schedule was all over the place. She has two jobs, she has kids, and she actually did not eat the same. So for people like that, I do recommend just tracking, period, because otherwise we're not know where your calories are at. If your days are more or less the same, you can get away with tracking for like a week or two and then be like, all right, I eat about 1,800 calories, and then on the weekends, I eat about 2,500 calories. Cool. So my average throughout the week is X amount of calories, right? You can average all this out through the week, through the month. I'm not going to say through the year because that's scary. That's like a lot of calories. But in the end, like that's what your body does, right? Over a period of time, you gain weight or you lose weight based on over this long period of time, did you expand more or did you consume more, right? So she tracks every day because she's not consistent throughout her life with food, which is okay. The more consistent you are, the easier it is and the easier you can form those routines of like, all right, I eat about these three options for breakfast. I have a savory, a sweet, and a to-go option. And then for lunch and dinner, and I can plan to eat more over the weekends and not feel bad about it. Like, it's not like, oh my God, I'm bad bad job I ate in the restaurant. Like, no, you have accounted for this in your routines. So you actually can eat more. And if you don't want to, okay, you've saved yourself some calories. Maybe you can, I don't know, treat yourself a bath or something else, or you don't have to hike for like an extra half a mile or something, uh, right? Okay, cool. Got done with the calorie situation. <clears throat> She sent me some pictures, okay. Sometimes I go to the gym, sometimes I don't. I have uh, a gym at the house. I would like to work at the house. I only go to the gym to use the pool. I don't really know what machines to use at the gym, what weight to take, and what weight to use in any exercise. Oh boy. She sent me pictures in clothes also, like pretty loose clothes, and I'm like, that's awesome. That doesn't really like tell me much. Like even in terms of posture, I do like to see people's lower back and people's hips. Like where do they sit? Are they straight? Do you have scoliosis? Do you have lordosis? When people send me pictures in clothes, like clients, I understand you're not going to look good, you know, doing these like uh, very typical uh, check-in progress photos. No one looks good in them. I don't look good in them. Bodybuilders don't look good in them. Okay. Th they're not for you. They're for your coach. And they're not just to make you feel bad, you don't have to look at them. Ask your spouse, your significant other, to take some pictures, boom, 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 and send them to me. Don't even look at them, they're for me. They're not for you. I'm not gonna post them anywhere unless you are okay with before and afters being posted on the web. It is totally fine, all right? Uh, grabbing whatever the weights for whatever the exercises. She didn't even list the exercises, so I was like, I can't advise you on that because uh, it depends on if you're doing a bicep curl or a deadlift, it'll be a different weight, right? And machines, we just, I made our program with body weight for the most part. It's body weight and some circuits and uh, some bands and some small weights that she has at the house. So it seemed to be enough. Uh, and we're not doing any bicep curls and any abs, by the way which is what she was doing before she later said. Oi. Katya, when should I take pictures? Early in the morning uh, or later? In the morning would be best before I get fat or bloated. 
You don't get fat throughout the day. You may get bloated because you eat food, but you're not just all of a sudden going to eat get fat. Yes, taking pictures in the morning is best. I advise most folks to just do their morning routine, you know, brush your teeth, brush your hair, go to the bathroom, and then before you put on clothes, take some pictures and then go about your day. So weigh in, take pictures in the morning, just so you don't forget. You can do it in the evening too. It, the, the weight will vary a little bit more depending on how much you've eaten and drank by this point, but you technically can. So I like morning, just get out of the way, eat the frog. It's not very hard, right? And most people like how they look in the morning more anyways than the evenings. They think they're, they're fat in the evenings, even though it's, it's about the same. It's just in your head. Okay, another critical question. Shall I try to change my schedule? I really, really try to work out in the morning and I can't. That is my priority. Oh, what is my priority? Sleep or workout? Oh boy. I can't figure it out. I'm torn between sleep vs workout. Wow. Okay. Well, sleep is important. I would say more important than training, especially if you have a busy life and a family and two jobs. I would always go for sleep and more calorie deficit, like I said, from nutrition. And I've built her short workouts that don't take that much time. It, she still struggles to get, to get them in, even though some of them are like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. But yeah, if you sleep less than, uh, gosh, I forget. There was a research I read on nurses who sleep less than five hours a night. So uh, if they sleep up to seven hours a night, they typically don't gain weight if they eat around maintenance. But if they sleep less, they start getting more cortisol, they are a little more depressed, a little more anxious, and then they gain weight. You don't just gain weight because you sleep less. Clearly you're awake more, you have two more hours to eat food, but I think it also is a little bit of the metabolic issue. So do try to sleep at least six, seven hours a night, please. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> Potential workout times, early mornings, 5 to 7 a.m., or day, 12 to noon, evenings, mostly after 6 or 7. That is if I skip dinner and work out instead while my family eats. But if I work out late at night, 9 to 10 p.m., I'm wired up and I can't sleep. What would be the ideal time to work out and how do we get there? If you struggle to get workouts in, during the day, I would probably recommend eating the frog and getting it out of the way the first thing in the morning. That's why I hike in the mornings, walk my dogs. I usually get in like two, maybe three miles in the mornings because I'm not going to get them throughout the day. And I know that my, that my day is just going to get taken away from me. So that's what we ended up doing with her. My perfect workout time, of course, would be around lunch. That's what I used to do when I had a corporate job. It was fantastic. I had two meals in. By then, I had more energy. I was already, like, awake. So it was perfect for me. Again, depends on the person. Now I work out in the evenings just because I do my cardio in the mornings. I walk my dogs. And then I do all of the work. I eat my meals. And in the evenings, I'm like, ah... I can finally treat myself some barbell time and I go work out, hang out with my boyfriend, you know, have dinner, do all of the things. We hang out in the gym a lot too and just in between sets, chill, talk, have fun. So it's like fun time for me, but not for everybody, definitely not for her yet. Uh, I don't think working out instead of dinner is a great idea. You should probably spend time with your family. Uh, at least that's what I would do, but I can't speak for other people. <laughs> I just advise that she gets it out of the way in the morning. All right. What are the macros that I should set in my fitness pal? Uh, how much fat? 50% probably? Or will it calculate my macros by itself? Well, I gave her the macros, so they were going to be in her meal plan. So I explained where to find them later. Some people, for some reason, just when they install my fitness pal, they think whatever it recommends is what they should eat. That's not the case because it has some very basic calculator and usually it gives you like, I don't know, 40% carbs, 30% fats, 30% protein. Bye. But 
that really varies, right? Depends if you're a small person, big person, dude, girl, however you identify it, it and what you do, right? It differs. And then I think it's kind of pointless, like recommending somebody this lady's size eats like 120 grams of protein a day. Yes, it would probably be useful to eat a little bit more, but if she struggles to get in 50 grams, I'm just gonna give her anxiety by giving her so much more, right? So maybe I'm gonna start giving her 70. Not because it's ideal, but because let's see that she hits that goal and feels good about herself, and then we can bump it up a little bit more. Like, I don't want to cause people stress. I don't like when my clients feel bad about themselves. My goal as a coach is not just to design an optimal plan, but also to make them feel good about themselves and to make sure they hit their goals one after the other and after the other, and then we increase complexity of those goals. Duh, logic, psychology. <laughs> All right, uh, more questions. More questions. <laughs> I went to the doctor today and he said I should eat 1300 calories. You assigned me more, why? <laughs> Okay, well, I really love it when people go to like doctors or nutritionists and they, they be like, mm, you're overweight, you should eat this and this many calories. Or like, you're overweight, you should um, do cardio. Why most, I don't think most doctors unless they're nutritionists really like know macronutrient wise and calorie wise. Uh, and if the doctor just looked at her kind of was like about this many, they didn't know much about her. That's kind of interesting. Uh, I would say either listen to your doctor or to me, but it's impossible to listen to both. If you hire a coach, maybe listen to your coach first, right? And then listen to your doctor about the things that you should listen to doctor about, right? Your physicals, your checkups, your labs, uh, and things like that. Okay. Let's see. Oh, this actually really got me upset. My kids and husband laugh at me when I take my progress photos. They see me when I try to work out and say I should sew my mouth tight uh, instead of starting a new program and a new diet for which I'm not gonna have commitment again and laugh at me. I get upset and cry. Ooh, that's really hard. I don't really know how to how to deal with, with those issues when you don't have support from your family. That's super tough. I've seen it sometimes. Usually partners are supportive as far as I've seen in my clients, but some families be like that. Um, her husband, she said, is overweight as well, but he doesn't do anything about it. So maybe him laughing at her is like a way to make up with his potential inability to do it himself, right? To like lose weight himself if he wants to, or maybe he wants for her to stay bigger as well so they can kind of be bigger together. So I don't really know, but that's tough. And probably the only thing, the main thing for anybody to succeed throughout a long period of time would be support. I would say your environment, right? So what people at your work do, what people in your family do, what you do during travel, around those times with your kids. So if you're not being supported, but actually get reprimanded and laughed at, that's, that's the worst. And uh, that's really tough. I haven't really gotten that before in terms of the gym but I've gotten that at work. Like I was laughed at and stuff like that. And be like, oh, you, you wouldn't be able to do this. Oh, you're leaving a corporate job to start your own business. Like, yeah, you're just gonna come back to it in a year. Like you're gonna go back to engineering. And um, I didn't, I haven't yet. And I don't plan on it, honestly. I'm all right. I love my business and I love what I do. So I wasn't really planning on proving anybody wrong. I was just like, this is what I want to do and everybody else can piss off, you know, whatever they think, it's not their life. So it's important 
to not do something out of spite, right? To prove anybody wrong. However, if whatever your husband says, if he laughs at you when you train, makes you angry, or you're, I don't know, your girlfriend wants to go out and drink and you're going to the gym instead, and she's like ridiculing you and laughing at you, sometimes fueling that anger into getting in a better, harder workout could work, right? You don't have to always be bubbly and loving life. You can be upset and angry, but fuel that anger in the right direction. <laughs> I actually have a couple of clients who have had really great like breakup weight loss and one of them competed. That was super fun. And she was doing that in spite of, you know, her boyfriend's uh, advice and whatever he thought would be great for her. She should quote unquote stay feminine and like not power lift. Uh, it's going to make her bulky. She looks amazing. She's super strong. She loves what she does, but she fueled that anger into getting results in the gym. That also works, right? So I guess do whatever works for you. I think we're going to do the last question to wrap this up because she's asking me a lot of stuff and this probably should be split into two videos. Oh, some progress. Katya, I got it. Uh, weight is going down slowly. So slowly. <laughs> it is infuriating. How can we make it faster? Maybe you can't. I mean, you can, but she, she's, she's been losing like a pound a week. Yes, she could be losing more, but she's short. So I think we're just going to lose muscle if, she, if we lose more. So I'm like, all right, slow beats. It's, it's a marathon, it's not a race, so slow beats, losing quickly and then getting it back. So just stick with it. And then she got so happy <laughs> that she ate uh, half a pack of bacon during the weekend when she was making it for her kids. Kids wanted that. So she's asking if I could increase her workouts from three times a week to four, five, or six because she ate some bacon. And she feels so bad because she's trying to eat plant-based and she's trying to get, become vegan. Uh, what what should she do? Well, I'm going to say that getting back to your old habits is kind of like a part of gaining new habits, right? Um, I forget the scientific name, uh, recidive, I don't know, of what it's called. Like when I was going vegan, it, it took me a while, you know, and sometimes like I took, I think it took me the whole like spring or summer, whatever season it was, like three months probably. So I slowly got rid of like dairy and replaced it with soy stuff. And then I got rid of um, meat, replaced it with tofu. It took me the longest to get rid of fish. What else? Yeah, there were not as many like meat replacement supplements at the time. So I had to learn how to cook tofu. That was terrible. I did not make good tofu at first. Uh, I did not know how to make seitan for like the first year or so. Uh, but yeah, it took me a while. So I, when I went out with friends, I still went back to my old habits and got home and thought I was the ter most terrible person. But in the end, like I'm vegan now and whatever was, whatever already happened, happened. You know, if her eating half a pack of bacon happened, she doesn't need to beat herself up over it maybe just think about, okay, what can I do next time that my kids ask for bacon to not eat bacon and kind of plan for it, like get some vegan bacon or get another thing that you really love that will satisfy this uh, smoky, salty, meaty craving, right? And just have that in your fridge, have that in your freezer. I have vegan meat replacements for all occasions in my freezer. I have all kinds of tofus. Like I just have food. If I feel a craving for something, I can probably make it macro friendly and vegan at home and I don't need to go anywhere. So just being prepared is the best thing that you can do. And no, I did not increase her workouts from three to four and five and six times a week because we already were doing enough. We were hitting all muscle groups and she doesn't have time for it. Even if I increased her amounts of workouts, she wouldn't even be able to do that. She was already struggling to get three in. So half a pack of bacon is how many calories? I don't know. Let's say it was 500 calories. Let's say it was really fatty bacon. I don't, I don't even know. But let's say it's that much. That's like one hike. You don't need to train more. A little more cardio and a little more steps throughout the day would do it. 
But for most of my clients who just like suddenly overate, be it birthday, wedding, or whatever, like we don't punish them with calories. We just move along with the plan. Yes, your progress may be a little bit slower, but consider your refeed day, right? We did not have a refeed day with her that week. We actually don't really have refeed days with her at all because they kind of happen like this sometimes, you know, involuntarily. They just happen. With people who do stick to their diet more, we do have refeed days. So those would be the days that, let's say, over the weekend or some other time, you just plan to have more calories. And typically, I advise to have those extra calories and carbs, not in fats. You can have them in fats and proteins, but to boost your leptin levels, you would have like refeed weeks. We can talk about that in another video, but kind of to satisfy cravings and stuff, a little more carbs, a little more calories, and move along with your week. All right, I've talked enough. I have this one to walk. So we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions regarding whatever we've talked about today. Uh, share this video with your friends, like it, subscribe, and I will talk to you tomorrow.